Okay, I think I'm I think I'm live. If anybody's out there, let me know. Go down here. Hey everybody, if <laughs> whoever whoever's there, this is the pre Lalita local live stream live stream where I draw stuff and uh and talk to everybody, or try to, while I draw. So I thought today I would draw some sea stars. And uh, more importantly, I, this is a good one for you guys to draw along. So as people come in, I'll probably say that over and over again if people start watching. But um, yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. So the, the key to drawing a sea star, you don't want to do the old star thing. That's not a very good one anyway. Uh, I don't think I, the way I like to draw sea stars is I do like to do like a base sketch and I'll start with like a central disc because sea stars all have this central disc and then I will make the arms radiate off of that. So most sea stars have five arms. Okay. There are some exceptions. Let me just put sea star. Or starfish don't tell my coworkers i said starfish they'll freak out but um but you can say starfish i don't really care but anyway um let me uh I've got a new version of this program so i'm still getting used to it a little bit some really cool updates though just wanted to move that down all right so i've got my central disk and now what i want to do is as i i want five arms to radiate off of this so uh now there's a lot of different types of sea stars and stuff out there i'm just going to do kind of a generic sea star so i'm just going to start doing the arms and here's here's where it gets a little tricky for the most part none of the arms really line up parallel with each other so uh, really you're just trying to make five arms on here but not really have any of them line up super well sometimes they'll kind of line up but most of the time they don't. But these are basically just triangles. And you want to make them about the same size. But if they're not, it's not a huge deal because sea stars can regenerate arms. So, you know, you could just say that it's regenerated that arm or something. <laughs> uh, now, once you've got your general sea star shape, you can see this is a little bit different than just like a regular star shape. You know, it's not quite... The same thing. Now you can start kind of roughing in some details and uh, getting a little more specific with it. So um, one of the things I like to do is sea stars usually have kind of rounded edges on their arms here. So I'm going to make these kind of rounded. I didn't know if I was going to go live tonight, by the way, because I just been super busy and um, but. I wanted to try it, especially since I, I got the new iPad and um, wanted to see how that would work. Turns out it seems to work exactly the same as the last generation of iPad for going live, so which I would expect, actually. So no surprises. No big surprises there. Like, this arm is longer. Now, I can also just kind of correct that a little bit. But yeah, sea stars are not that hard to draw. You just got to break it down. Like anything else into these basic shapes. Let's see what I got for an eraser here. I want to change that to an airbrush. So it's kind of like a regular eraser. It's kind of erase some of this away. We'll even erase. I'm trying to do this like you would do with pencil. I mean, I could do this on other layers and stuff, but I want to make it as similar as possible for those of you out there drawing on just a pencil and paper, because I know most of you are probably not drawing this digitally. <laughs> if you're drawing along. But yeah, so there's there's your basic C star shape. Now we just have to add some of the some of the details. So uh, one of the things you can add is kind of a, a line on your C star's arms here, just to give it a little bit of three dimensionality. Some C stars have this line, some some don't. It's the other nice thing about C stars is they they are very 
different, so you can, you know, most people aren't familiar enough with sea stars to go, that doesn't look right for the species of sea star that you're currently drawing. Uh, now, one thing that sea stars do have, and a lot of people don't see this, is they have a little opening called the madreporite. And what that is, is sea stars, they are completely dependent on a water vascular system. So this is where the water is going into their body right here. It's, it's uh, not their mouth. It's not the uh, place where the waste comes out. It is actually, um, it is actually their water intake. So, so that's what that is there. Now, once you get this, you could, um, you could do a lot of things here. You could add circles for texture. You know, a lot of sea stars have kind of knobby skin, bumpy, spiny skin. Um, so you could do that. You could add a little bit of, of shading if you want to. You know, give it more more texture. There's a lot there's a lot of options out there. You know, if you're coloring your sea star, you could you could color at this point here. I'll do a little this is kind of a rough rough sketch sea star. So yeah, now if you want to get fancy, now what you can start to do is you can start to do things like lift up the um, the legs, the arms, I should say, of the sea star. So you can see the underneath. Or there's, you can do different types of sea star. So um, let me do a different type of sea star. This one is going to have kind of a smaller disc, but it's got real big, rounded arms. And these arms are often more more curvy you know, they 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 move them and um, so they can be different different shapes and stuff Ooh, it looks really blurry I'm watching this on my TV as while well. I'm streaming and it looks really blurry I hope it's not blurry for you guys out there hopefully it's just my internet um, of course, that may not be good if it is my internet, but yeah. If you are out there, let me know. I should be able to see the chat, or Sandy should be able to see the chat. Uh, you might be watching on Facebook. You might be watching on YouTube. Um, curious to know which one you're doing, if you're doing one of those. I'm going to erase this arm and change the shape a little bit just to give it more... I mean, the Sea star could be shaped like that, but I just want to give it a more artistic balanced look here <laughs> now um, this is like I said this is a, just a different species of sea star but this is another kind of common one in fact uh, really a lot of times they will be kind of almost bigger here I don't know if you guys have seen sea stars that look like this. If you're in Florida, you probably won't. This is more of a Pacific sea star. I don't think there are any sea star species quite like this in the Caribbean or Florida. But they are in other parts of the world. And they're often blues or bright reds. They don't really have those those lines they're very sausage like looking no comments yet i don't know if anybody's out there um yeah i'm over here chatting away oh sandy's chatting away i had no idea <laughs> so your comments aren't showing up so i'm not seeing any comments here unfortunately so We've got E. Nixon in the house. Oh, hey, E. Nixon. E. Nixon, what is your first name? So I don't have to keep calling you E. Nixon. Is it, is it Emily? Is it, I'm trying to think other E, E names. Um, we've got Dave and Brandy. Oh, hey, Dave and Brandy. Now, I'm, I'm guessing maybe Brandy, Brandy is drawing along. We've got Ship Shape with Ann. Oh, hey, Ann. And Melody Wolf. Hey, M Melody. Melody Wolf. M Melody Wolf. Well, hello, everybody. Um, Elaine. Elaine. All right. Okay. 
Hi. Now, now I got a name. Anne says hi. Hey, Anne. Thank you so much, Anne, for that popcorn. It was delicious. <laughs> and gone. <laughs> and gone. Sandy ate it all. I did not. She ate all of it. No, she shared. She's she's good like that. I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna shrink these guys off to the side so I have more room here. Um. Elaine says the first one is what we see on the BC coast. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, we have a uh, touch pool at the aquarium, Elaine, and it it has um, invertebrates from the west coast of the United States in Canada, and um, there are several large sea stars that look like this. Now, I will say this is, this is kind of a, a generic-looking sea star, so... If you, once you color it in and stuff, it could be a lot of different species. But yeah, there are, there are several different species that look like that. And they, your invertebrates get really big too. Uh, all right. Now here's, here's one I was hoping to see on the group cruise and I didn't. And this one is going to be a brittle star. Still has, um, still has five arms, still starting with the central disc, but this time I'm making these long spiny type arms here like so and a lot of curve because these guys move like you know you could watch a sea star for a while and it'll move but you can all, it, they move so slow like you almost can't tell that they're moving uh if you put like a time lapse on them you would see that they're pretty busy creatures but um that arm's a lot shorter um but brittle stars are kind of different than that they are pretty active sea stars and they will just climb around i'm getting getting griff from griff and Alyssa is sending me some information i'll have to read that in a bit so these guys are are super active and they're really just they just seem a lot different than other sea stars but really they're they're not that much different other than the fact that they're more more mobile now i want to talk about your new ipad uh, melody asked um what iPad do you have now? Oh, so the so Melody, the new iPad Pro 2018 came out um, just like last week. And uh, I've got the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Um, I got the one with 256 megabytes of RAM, of not RAM, of, of storage. Um, it's an upgrade from last year's model. I'm going to get, these guys have like sort of spines here and, um, it's basically, it's the screen size is the same, but they kind of did what they did with the iPhone 10. So they decreased the bezel size. And, um, so it's, it's a smaller iPad, but the same screen real estate. So that's really cool. And then the Apple pencil, there's a new Apple pencil, which the performance is, is pretty much the same, which is great because the Apple pencil is amazing. Um, but it doesn't have the awkward thing where you have to take the cap off the back and plug it into your iPad to charge it. It actually magnetically attaches to your iPad and then charges um, that way wirelessly while you are not using it. So it's really cool. And then it also has a touch feature on it. So it's got a two tap touch. Like if I, uh, I know you won't be able to see me tapping it, but if I tap tap, um, I've got it set to where it goes full screen. And then tap tap it goes, but you can you can customize it and stuff. So, um, I I use the iPad obviously for art, but um, I use it for so much stuff. I use it for a lot of work stuff. My work should probably buy me an iPad, but uh, but I use it for everything. So it I mean I have a regular computer, and I have to do like I edit the cruise geeks on a regular computer and stuff. I could technically do it probably on the iPad videos. I've edited some videos on the iPad some on a computer, but, um, I use it a lot. So I, I upgrade the iPad pro when the new ones come out. Usually. Okay. We have another question. Okay. It's from, it's from Elaine. She says, sometimes I have seen large ones with more than five arms. What are they? Yeah. So Elaine, there are sea stars that have more than five arms and there are, it's not one specific type of sea star, um, there are quite a few that have, they always have at least five. I mean, they could lose one and they'll regenerate it, but, um, but there's one that's pretty 
commonly seen called the crown of thorns sea star and it has a bunch of arms there's also basket stars which have have multiple arms um so there's there's quite a few actually so it could be it could be a lot of different ones depending on on uh where they are and uh the crown of thorns is huge and they can be devastating to like coral reefs and stuff like that but um yeah there's a lot there's a lot of different species and um, several of them have multiple, more or by multiple, I mean more than five arms. Another interesting thing is that there are a lot of sea stars, or at least some species that um, can do more than, like if you, like a sea star, if a sea star loses an arm, um, they'll regenerate, they'll, they'll grow it back. But there are some sea stars that will actually, um, they will actually, if you cut them, like through the central disc, like, like this, as long as there's enough of this disc left, each piece will grow into a new sea star. So that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so it could be could be a lot of different species. Now I want to do um, I want to do kind of the sort of the bottom of a sea star. I think what I'm going to do is sort of a more side side view of a sea star. I'm going to try try to um, just so I can show some of the anatomy on the other side of the sea star because there's some interesting stuff going on on the bottom of the sea star so this one's a little bit more complicated to draw especially without a reference but uh, we're going to try it so you won't even be able to see probably all the arms here um but they're there just have to take my word for it i my coworkers get really upset when they see drawings of octopus that don't have eight arms and i try and tell them that if you look at photographs of octopus, you can't always see all eight of their arms all the time, but they just don't understand. So um, <laughs> the sea star really does have five arms. It's just they're hidden. Uh, so so here's here's an interesting thing. Sea stars have this sort of gap underneath their arms, and then in that gap, they have little what are called tube feet. And these are actually little like suction cups. And this is what they use to, to hold on to things. Um, this is what they use to move. You know, this is their, again, water vascular system. So they're depending on water going into this, this madreporite, which I didn't, I didn't draw on my other sea stars. See, so yeah, I should, I should do that. They've all got it. Um, and that's how they, that's how they get around. And that's how they do everything they need to do. So, so yeah, so they have these two feet here. We'll give this guy his madreporite right there so you can see it. They've got the spiny skin. And then the, the mouth of the sea star is actually on the underneath side. So let me just, I know I say I always do the disc and then I didn't do it. Um, I really do draw that out. I don't just say that for this because otherwise I'll end up with really weird looking sea stars. But um, yeah, so the underside, if this is a sea star that's say flipped over, I'll, I'll put in the, um, the place, this little canal where the tube feet would be and it's interesting because this actually all runs right into the mouth so when you look at a sea star it's just really these gaps with the tube feet running right into that mouth in the middle and here's the one of the coolest things I can tell you about sea stars other than the fact that they can regenerate into multiple sea stars if you cut them the right way certain types is that when they eat what they do is they'll eat like um you know like a clam or something this is my quick little it's not a very good clam but uh you get the idea so the so they'll eat like a clam so the clam of course is clam and shut right so they if you've ever tried to open a live clam you know that there's a reason why some of their relatives are called mussels they're they're just really strong they don't they don't open very wide so your your sea star will move over the top oh we'll, whoops we'll see if we'll do a little animation here mm -hmm. um they will they will move over the top of your of your clam and then the clam what it'll do is it'll it'll tighten those muscles and to do that it has to it's just like us like making a fist or something so it it requires a lot of of uh use of those muscles and they'll get tired just like when we use our muscles they get tired and when that happens the sea star will use these two feet and they will pull the clam open just just a little bit 
not a lot, just just a, a fraction of, of a little bit. But then what they do is they will take their stomach and they will invert their stomach um, out of their body and it goes into the clam shell and it literally digests the clam in its own shell. And then when they're done, they just they just suck the, their stomach right back up into into their bodies. And that's how that's how sea stars eat. So it's pretty cool, really. Uh, pretty cool way to eat. All right. Well, I just looked at the time and I saw that it is 838. And I know that La Lita Loca starts in just over 20 minutes. And I do want to set up my computer so that I can type. Uh, that is one. Well, I just need to get the keyboard for the iPad. But um, but I also want to give you guys a chance to get in there because I know everybody likes to get in there early and and chat with everyone, and I want to chat with everyone too. So uh, thank you guys for watching. And if you did draw sea stars with me or if you draw some later on, um, feel free to post them over at Creature Science Illustrated on Facebook. If you're not already, a, I think everybody in here is probably already in that group, but if not, you can join Creature Science Illustrated and you can post art or you can see other art that's being put up there. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys over at Lolita Loca. Have a fantastic evening.